chini ili tuweze kuendelea Happy Father's Day to all the fathers we want to thank God for you and uh, celebrate this Happy Father's Day with you and we know that being a father is not easy but it's a gift from the Lord amen and we can learn to be better fathers from our God because he's, he's also our father he's a source of life also fathers are a source of life our father in heaven is also a giver fathers should give our uh, our father in heaven is a protector he's all that a father should ever be so the best place to learn to be a father is from our father who is at in heaven and uh, this morning i'm born again christ is lord uh, my name for the sake of the visitors do we have visitors today do we have visitors somewhere today we want to acknowledge all our visitors and tell you to be yes we have one let us appreciate her yeah there are many there are many karibuni sana katika nyumba ya bwana this is sukari uh, parish uh, sukari church and we want to welcome you if you're visiting go with our blessings but if you want to stick with us we uh, shall usher you to the vestry after the service so that we can interact more as we become part of our members so may god bless us as we uh, continue serving in this church asanteni i would also want to uh, maybe just take note of an announcement that has been made that the presbytery of nairobi north has planned for an elevation conference this is a convention and we all know conventions so coming week um, we shall have a convention and we are be, we will be hosting the presbytery on saturday the 25th and we have been invited to come and participate the event is a whole day event it's starting from 8 in the morning uh, 9 in the morning sorry all the way to 8 p.m in the evening and we'll have different speakers including our secretary general i think so you are most welcome to come and participate whatever time you'll be available but for those people who are listed in the districts make sure that you're here to welcome other people coming from the different parishes within our presbytery and i know god is going to bless us as we continue i would also want to say that i'll be taking a brief leave uh, coming week uh, up to some time in july but for the purposes of my office uh, we have a pastoral office and in case um, i'm needed our office is open i'll just be away for a few days and then i'll be coming back to continue with the service of god hallelujah we are reading the book purpose driven life and i know that we have now covered a number of purposes uh, and uh, the first purpose of this book that uh, we are learning is to worship and then after worship we did the second purpose which is fellowship that we have been called we were created so that we can have fellowship with one another and then we learned the third purpose which was discipleship where we learned that uh, we have been created to be christ-like and uh, last sunday our parish minister introduced the fourth purpose which is service and uh, this is to challenge us to work for the night is coming we were called to serve the lord and one of the things that uh, got me thinking when i read this purpose is that everybody has been called to serve kitambo we used to think that service is for ministers service is for elders service is for the ordained but what we are learning from what we are learning from this book is that we were all called to serve the lord today we shall focus on day 30 and 31 and uh, the title of our message is understanding your ship let us pray everlasting father in the mighty name of jesus we want to honor your name and we want to thank you because you're faithful you have called us god to serve and we want to pray that by your grace and your mercies you shall teach us how to serve and where to serve and we pray that god even as we hear your message this morning we shall uh, be encouraged to continue serving you and giving our best in your work and this is our prayer of faith in jesus name amen and amen this morning like i've mentioned i want to talk about understanding your ship when i mean ship we all have different ships body ships 
but I'm saying that we are shaped for service. And when I was reading this book, I came across something that was very interesting. Whenever you want to build a house and maybe a certain room, the engineer, the contractor will always ask you this question. What do you need the room for? Before they design, before they decide what it is they are going to give you, they will always ask you the purpose to which you are making that room. The purpose to which you want to use that particular room. And this made me understand that before God created us, because you are created for a purpose, I'm imagining he had to call the angels and tell them that I want to create so and so for a certain purpose. And for this reason, God gave you some certain abilities and some certain gifts so that when you shall land, you shall be able to fulfill that which he purposed you for. Because everybody was created for a certain purpose. And what we shall be learning in this scripture or in this um, sermon this morning is that we have different gifts and abilities, but all are supposed to be used for the glory of God in his service. I want us to look at an image that is on the screen uh, this morning. And these are birds, beaks, and feet. Uh, what can you see from the screen? We have some beaks and feet. And you know it is interesting, as I was preparing, that even birds have different shapes because they have different purposes that they were created for. For a duck, its feet is built in a way that it will enable it to swim. But for other birds, they have feet that are created in a way that will help them to be able to swim or walk. Yet we also have others that have a feet that enables them to only do walking, but they can never go through the waters. Even their beaks were designed in such a manner that they will be able to assist them, do what they need to do for their life. Look at the duck. Its beak was meant for filtering. The other bird there has a sharp pointed beak which was made for probing. In Ingiza, katika maji na katika matope, it probes for its, for, for its food until it gets. But you also have one that has a very tiny beak. And this beak is intended to catch insects. That tells us that that bird which is down there can never filter in the mud like the duck. And the duck can never catch insects in its life. And this means that God created them that way, way, or thought about it that way, way before he created them. Because he knew their purpose for life and how they're going to run their lives. We also are shaped differently for different functions in the body of Christ. We always say that the church is the body of Christ. And the body has different parts, including your own body. And none of your body parts play the role of the other. And none of your body parts is less important. You cannot tell me because when I'm standing here, you can see my face, you can see my hands, you can see my arms and all that you can see. You cannot tell me that my internal body parts are not important. You know, sometimes... There are people we will never see physically, but they are very important in our lives. Has anyone of us seen the intestines of late? Can you live without them? They are equally important, much as they are hidden within you. So when you talk about the body of Christ, everyone is important and everyone is created for a specific and a unique ministry. And my encouragement this morning... The way you are, you are shaped for service. Hallelujah. Let none of us ever think that they do not have what it takes to serve the Lord. And the reason why I think this is important for us, 
and we need to understand our shape is because sometimes people conflict because we expect others to be like us we even push other people to serve the way we serve we push other people to be in ministries they don't belong this someone is to help us understand that you're gifted to serve in a specific unique place and even some of us think they do not have what it takes to serve and like we learned last sunday some will say that service and ministry is for ministers and other people we are being reminded that all of us are called to serve others are in the wrong ministries others are trying to push themselves into places that do not fit because i'm imagining that bird with a small beak can never serve in the ministry of the duck which is in the waters and the mud you know one time i i i, I thought of joining the choir i'm sicheke and I, I i i thought i'm good at it at some point and i actually went in my former church and paul can bear me witness and i went and joined them practiced with them and sang with them but was the end of, uh, of 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 what we were doing the choir teacher and many choir teachers are not very kind <laughs> the choir teacher told me uh uh in fact what he said was was very interesting because he told me i actually thought you came to pray with us <laughs> I, I was not too sure you were coming to to rehearse to sing i thought you were you were just coming to encourage us as choir to carry on with our work and then pray with us as our leader uh, so he was simply telling me that i'm not fit for what they were doing and and when he it asked him where 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 do i fit in the choir he told me your voice is called i never forget that your voice is called asapo have you heard asapo because up to date i have never known which voice that was and the truth of the matter is i never went back because i realized that is not my ministry but it's what the choir will do that i can never do yet there is what i do that they'll never do so it was for me to go back and ask god what is my shape the lord said where we kwako ni pale kwa pulpit mambo ya choir atia wana choir but glory be to god he has given me a son who can sing in the choir <laughs> amen so it is good for us to understand where we are gifted so that we shall serve god with fulfillment and sometimes we even conflict with people just because we feel like they're not doing what they're supposed to do and i've learned this even as an evangelist in this parish i don't push people to areas they are not fit to serve i allow people to serve where the lord has called them to serve and we shall be looking at this so what i'm trying to say here beloved in the lord we are shaped to serve and we have different shapes that the lord wants to use in his service the writer of this book comes up with an acrostic of the word shape that i'd want us to look at this morning shape shape he says represents the following things s is for your spiritual gifts we all have different gifts spiritual gifts h is for your heart a for your abilities p for your personality and e for your experiences and i want us to look at each at a time let us look at the first one which is ship uh, spiritual gifts as for spiritual gifts in our second reading this morning we read the book of ephesians chapter 4 from verses 1 to verses 13 and what the bible is telling us this morning is that the body of christ is one so we are one but we have different gifts the bible told us that he has given us we have one spirit we have one hope we have one lord we have one faith we have one baptism we have one god and father but each one of us has different gifts has been given grace to the measure of Christ's gifts so we may have all these things that are in common 
spirit is common, our hope is common, our faith is common, our baptism is common, even our Lord is common. God the Father is one, but we have different gifts. Then the reading took us further to a very interesting thing in Ephesians 4.11. And we call it the five-fold ministry. The Bible tells us, and he himself, himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and others teachers. Angalia mkono wako hivi, tusome kidogo. This is called the fivefold ministries. And to some, the Bible has told us, he made apostles. An apostle is a witness of our Lord Jesus Christ. He lays the foundation of the work of Christ. And for your information, this is the only finger that cannot, can connect with your all other fingers. This one, eh? It is the only finger that can touch the other fingers. The apostle is the only gifted person who can connect with the other ministries very easily. He can simply connect with the, with the, with the prophets, with the evangelists, with the, the, the pastors, and even with the, with the teachers. And that is why we call it fivefold ministry. The way it is arranged in the scripture is very clear. And then the Bible says, to others, he made prophets. Ikidole near prophets. Prophets are the ones who direct. What do you use this, this finger for? Two major things. One is? Quick matiko hapi, ukiwa hapa? And also this finger is used to one and direct. Uh, one and correct. Wewe vile unaenda, inahitaji ubadilike. Those are prophets. And we have them in the ministry, people who will tell you, evangelists vile unaenda, utapotea. And we have people who correct very well, and we know them. The other finger here is actually the tallest. Eh? Ni anani? Shape ya evangelists ni tallest. Sio shape ya mwili. Evangelists are the ones who are commissioned to go to the whole, the farthest. That is why it's the longest finger representing the evangelists. To go far and wide and make disciples for, for Christ. Then we have what we call the ring finger. The ring finger is for who? The pastors. By the way, there are many theories why the, the ring is put on this finger. One of the things they say is that the, 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 the ring is put on this finger because there is a vein that comes from this finger direct to the heart. I don't buy that so much like this one. The one I buy so much is, for your information, this is your weakest finger. This is your very weakest finger. It can't do anything by itself. This one. And that is why in Ekwa Ring, Ndiyomukishikanishwa upate nguvu. Because by yourself, you are very weak. <laughs> People don't marry because they are strong. You marry because you are feeling very weak alone. And you need the other person so that you can be able to be stronger. And the reason why this is for pastors is because pastors reach out to the very weak and vulnerable and they pastor them. There are people with a gift of reaching out. There are people with a gift of extending their hand to a person who is weak and vulnerable. Those are pastors. And finally, we have teachers. You know, someone asked me, why the small finger? Does it mean teachers are this useless? <laughs> that is not true. I can tell you for a fact, this is a finger that gives your hand balance. Without this finger, you cannot even lift anything. balance. So the teachers are the ones who gives us balance, eh? who, who help us to have balance of life. Even in the ministry, we have people who are gifted in the ministry of teach, teaching, who teach us so that we can have balance. Now look at this. He himself gave all these different ministries to different people for a purpose. And the Bible says in Ephesians 11, 12, it is for the equipping of saints for the work of ministry. The reason why God has gifted us differently 
equipped us differently. It is so that we can be able to equip saints, equip others for the work of ministry. The reason why we have a minister in this church, the reason why we have an evangelist in this church, the reason why we have teachers in this church, apostles and prophets, is so that you people can be equipped so that you can serve. Hallelujah. And I always tend to ask myself, what if we only had teachers alone? Who would guide us? What, we had, what if we had only evangelists? When they were later to Christo, then we have no one to teach them. So that is why we have different gifts, and all these gifts are used to equip us for the work of ministry. What we are calling this morning, service. And it is for this reason that we shall all come to unity of faith and the knowledge of the Son of God. To a perfect man, to the measure of stature of the fullness of Christ. Because we have different people serving in all these different ministries. Beloved in the Lord, you have your own spiritual gift that I don't have. The person seated next to you has a spiritual gift that you do not have. Let us accept each other and realize that we are one body of Christ. Hallelujah. H is for heart. Heart. And according to the writer of this book, he says, your heart represents your source of motivations. And I want to tell you this. If your heart is not willing, you can never do anything. Where there is a will, there is a way. And your heart should be guarded. No wonder the Bible says in Proverbs 4.23, guard your heart above oils because it determines the source of life. Your heart should be guarded. Is your heart in the, in the church? Is your heart willing to serve the Lord? Is your heart stirred up so that, that it can give itself to the work of God? Our first reading in the book of Exodus 36, especially verse 2, we see Moses summoning Bezael and Aholiab. And these were two people the Bible has told us they were gifted artisans in whose, this was important for me, in whose heart, in whose heart the Lord had, had put wisdom. God had put wisdom in their hearts. But listen to this. Everyone whose heart was stirred came to the work, to do the work. Everyone whose heart was stirred. Much as there were two people who were gifted, even others who were not gifted, they availed themselves because their heart or their hearts were willing. And if you read towards the end of that first reading we did, you will see something that is striking. That they gave more than was needed until Moses had to stop them. And I want to pray that after this, we shall be pushed, we shall be encouraged to offer ourselves more than is needed. That we shall serve until one day the elders will tell us, wait, please, you people go home. You have given more than this church needs. You have served more than we require. This is the attitude that these people had because their hearts were willing. They were stirred up. Your heart affects your passion. Your heart affects your enthusiasm. And your heart affects your effectiveness. If you want to see people who are not effective, if you see people around you who are not effective in whatever they do, it is just an indicator of where their hearts are. No wonder Jesus said, where your treasure is, there your heart shall be. So the things that you value the most, you give your heart. And you don't spare yourself. You give everything because your heart is willing. Passion drives perfection. When your heart is willing, there will be perfection. I look at some ministries that are not doing so well, even in our church and different churches. And it can tell you, the hearts of those people who are leading those ministries are not in them. Therefore, as we come to the very end of purpose-driven life, what on earth are we here for? Let us reevaluate whether our hearts are willing. When our hearts are attached to anything in this world, we give our best. We withhold nothing. We go out of our way. 
you know in Kikuyu they say, Kwa mwendo gotireke. Gotireke ma. You can never see obstacles when your heart is willing. You will go every length and breath to make sure that you do your best. You will never see obstacles. After this, we have A, ship. We said S for spiritual gifts, H for A for abilities. Back to a first reading. In Exodus 33, which was a first reading, Bezel and Ohaliab and others displayed their abilities in building the tabernacle. And the Bible is very clear that God had gifted them with certain abilities. Now, in the book of Matthew 25, from verse 14, we read about the parable of the talents. And the talents and the gifts that were given by the master, the Bible tells us in verse 15, each according to their own abilities. We have gifts that have been given to us according to our abilities. Among the things that God has given us, he has given us time, he has given us talents, he has given us abilities. Time is constant. Everybody has equal time. But when it comes to abilities, we are gifted differently. We have different abilities given to us by God. And our abilities should glorify the Lord. Hallelujah. No wonder the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 10, 31, so whatever you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Use your abilities to glorify the Lord. If you are gifted in singing, sing to glorify the Lord. If you are given to serve people in hospitality, do your best. If you are given to evangelize, give to evangelize, do your best. If you are a pastor who takes care of the needs of the people around you, give it your best. Because the Bible says again in Luke 12, 48, to whom much is given, much will be required. That gift that you have, the Lord will hold you accountable for it. What abilities do you have this morning to serve the Lord? We all have abilities that are given to us by our God. Now, let us look at P. P is quite interesting. Personality. Personality. And those who train us tell us that we have four personality types. And I took time to read this and look at it, and I found it very, very true and practical even in church. The Lord has gifted you with a personality that is different from that of the other person. Some of us are melancholics. A melancholy is a perfectionist. They have a need to be right. They have a need to provide quality. And these are analytical people. And we have them in the ministry. We have people who are pure perfectionists. When they come to church, they want to, 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 to ask why this seat was not... Because it, it, it requires to be in a certain order. They want to ask... Why, why didn't the program flow as we are used to? Why did the choir today sing before the district? <laughs> that is a, is, a, is a concern of a perfectionist. And we have them in the ministry. And they will have issues the whole day. And they want to analyze things and issues. And they want everything to go as it is required. If anything changes, perfectionists will be very uncomfortable. We have them in the ministry. People who you say we are meeting at 8 and they'll be here waiting for you at 8. And if you come a minute or two later, you have offended them. They are perfectionists in the ministry. For information, most of the prophets in the Bible, mo most of the prophets we have in the Bible were perfectionists. They were melancholics. Especially Jeremiah stands out because he's a kind of person who was really for why not do things this way? Everything you read about Nehemiah, Jeremiah is about why don't we do things this way? And he's questioning a lot because he's a perfectionist. Others were like Solomon and even Apostle John in the Bible. These are perfect example of perfectionists in the Bible. If that is your personality, 
the Lord wants you to use it in his service. We need perfectionists for order. We need perfectionists to make sure that things are done the right way. Otherwise, if we do not have them, we might have other characters that we shall see here, which are also very funny. <laughs> Apart from melancholics, then we have the people we call phlegmatics. A phlegmatic is a calm and peaceful person. Now, these are the kind of people who say, Mimi mulipatia kazi yote, lakini musiniambia nienda pale mbele nionge. They are easy going, and they are relaxed, and they tend to be calm, they tend to be steady, and they also start, turn to be uh, very rational. And uh, one of the best examples in the Bible of a person who was a phlegmatic is Abraham. Abraham was a very calm person who had his own fears and worry. He had worry, he, had, uh, he, he suffered indecision, even to make a resolution. But we see a turnaround happening in life uh, which also enabled him to serve. In his personality, God used him to do a lot. Phlegmatics do not want to put up a show. The kind of people who say, I came for the service, and all I want to do is after service, mimi nienda nyumba. You'll never see them hanging around here talking. Akitoka hapa, direct to their car, or they walk home without a lot of stories here and there. Those are phlegmatics. We need those people in the ministry. And when you find someone who is saying that, ah, ah, elder, please, mimi pale mbele, elder, kazi ya pana, mimi wacha nita intercede. Allow them to be that way. They were created that way for the glory of God. Hallelujah. And they're the kind of people who intercede for us. Yeah? When we are putting up a show, they're the kind of people who intercede for us. Now we have people we call sanguines. Sanguines. And what to sherehe. The fan type. And they tend to be very confident. And they're emotionally stable. And they are often characterized as happy. But what is most significant is that the emotions tend not to be extreme to be extreme or to dominate, they, they, they dominate them. Their emotions will dominate them. And these are the kind of people that we have in the ministry who when the phlegmatics are going direct home, sanguine na kianza salamu hapa, na instead apitie hii barabara, there is an easier way to your parking, they would rather go down this way, na arudi kwa guav tent, akuje sasa, saying hi to everyone. You see, a sanguine will come and meet you in a meeting, when a, when a melancholic was expecting you to be here at 8, the sanguines will come and say, Haya, kubi at a mjaanza. Yani umechelewa. Na mwona muna kama umekasirika huku. So everybody is offended. And a sanguine is coming very relaxed and they don't even care what you're feeling. And you know when I go to the districts, I see them. When you're having a fellowship that is supposed to start at 7.30, someone is coming comfortably at, 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 at 8 or 8.30. And even when they land in the district, they can't even apologize. Like, oh, members, uh, I'm sorry, there was traffic. Ay, 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 kubeta evangelista kuku. And they want to high five people. <laughs> they want to say, go saying hi to everybody. Yeah? <laughs> Telling us that, hey, ata apa mfai kuva mask. Apa kwa ni kuna corona, you know. And everybody's like. <laughs> we are orderly, we are, we are, we, we. And then they realize, oh, people are praying. And they say, hey, yeah, okay, sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> they're sanguines. We have them in the ministry. And of course, they're the people who bring life to us. A sanguine will light up a room when it's dull. When people are gloom and feeling tired and all this, they'll come and, you know, bring life to, to, to us. We need them in the ministry. Hallelujah. It is a gift that you have that others do not have. Now we have, and of course, a perfect example in the Bible was Peter. <laughs> yeah, I find Peter. Peter was very inter interesting. Every time Peter is mentioned in the gospel, he was actually talking. <laughs> very talkative. Everywhere. He's talking. He's everywhere. And even his sinful betrayal and easy repentance, for me, of course, with tears, is typically that of a sanguine. The other personality is called choleric. These are called people who control. They control others. And they are passionate and very intense. 
and they tend to be extreme in whatever they do. And they often push their way through. A choleric will say that this is the direction we are taking, and they will want to carry everybody to that direction. And even we find them even in homes and places. I've been to a place, and uh, even in these fellowships that we go to, and I want to serve myself food, and uh, I decide I'm not going to take a certain fruit. And a choleric will come and tell me, evangelist won't attack a machungwa. By then, if you your macho, you a vitamin. <laughs> So I'm like, I had decided to take a banana, and um, now they want to force you to take oranges. Ata vile na kuona mwili yako, inahitaji mandizi. Mbili kwanza. And they want, they want to control you. They want to control the way you do your things. They want to even to make choices for you. And by the way, even at home, when you have this kind of people, you, you can always find yourself in such conflicts. And even what we are reading here will help you so much when you're dealing with your children, when you're dealing with your spouse. Because even that spouse, even that child could have a different personality from yours. I see it in my house. I know my personality. I know that of my wife. I know that of my children, which are different. And you will see those personalities displaying in our, in our interactions. So if you do not understand them, if you do not understand your shape, you'll be conflicting even in the church. You'll be wondering, now what is wrong with this person in the church? The way they talk, the way they behave, the way they walk, the way they interact. I'm here to tell us we are gifted differently. Let us accept other people the way they are. Because that is not us, it is them. Hallelujah. Amen. Personalities differ and their gifts from the Lord. Finally, experiences. E for experiences. Our experiences come from family. From education from vocation, from spiritual experiences, from ministry experiences, and even from painful experiences. Our families shape our experiences. Psychologists will tell us our environments shape us to be the kind of people we are. We are products of our environments. You see it so much in your spouses in your spouse because the way they act is a reflection of where they come from which could be different from where you come from because that is how they are shaped it's their family some families are very collected some families are easy going other families are everything goes no rules others are very strict all these experiences shape the kind of person you are. I am who I am because of the background, the upbringing that I received from my parents. Education. Where did you school? And you know, we see it in our youth. You go to Guav, and before they tell you where they schooled, you will see some characters that you can trace to a certain school. Because an education system shapes who we are. All of us here have gone through some education. That education has a huge contribution to your experiences. Vocation, this is what you do, also shapes your experience. Spiritual experiences matter so much. That is why every time that we're having new members, we'll ask them, which church are you coming from? The background of your church. Some of us were from the um, Roman Catholic Church. Others were from the Pentecostals. And you'll always see these things display even in how they do and conduct their lives. Others are Presbyterians. Their spiritual experiences determine who they really are and how they do things. And of course, even how they serve God. Others are painful experiences. And let me say this, beloved in the Lord. Sometimes we feel bad when we are going through painful experiences. But it is in God's design to use some of those painful experiences for the sake of ministry. A perfect example I have in the Bible is Peter. I just mentioned that Peter was a sanguine. And Peter had little grace. When Peter saw what was Abishana na Yesu, you know what he did. Took his sword and slashed the ear of an officer because he was angry. He, was, he had his own tempers. His emotions were not controlled. But when you read the book of Luke 22, 31 and 32, Peter went through a very 
painful experience. This is the time that Jesus told him, Simon, Simon, the devil has sought to sift you as wheat. But I'm praying for you. That after you have repented, you shall strengthen your brothers. I want you to understand this, beloved, in the Lord. This experience, for me, was to humble Peter. Because Peter went through a shaky. In fact, the Bible is calling it sifting. You know what sifting is? The way you sift wheat, eh? So this guy went through a lot of sifting, a painful experience, and you know, in his, in his nature and personality, he was telling Jesus, ah, no, I cannot betray you. In fact, I'm ready to go with you up to the very end, up to the cross. But the truth of the matter is that it happened as Jesus had said. And Peter fell into a very painful experience. He was tempted and he betrayed Jesus. But one of the interesting things in this scripture is that Jesus says, I am praying for you that after you have been tested and you repent, you shall strengthen your brothers. I ask people, why didn't Jesus say or ask or tell Peter, I'll be praying for you that you shall not be sifted. You know, if Jesus is praying that he shall not fall into temptation, he would also have prayed that this guy will not be sifted. But it was in God's plan for Peter to go through the sifting so that after this, he will be a person who can strengthen others. People who go through experiences are the best to encourage others who are also in such experiences. Because others may not understand. Others may be very proud, thinking that it is your own fault that you found yourself in that mess. But a person who has gone through an experience, painful, difficult experience, they are the best people to encourage others. Your experiences were not meant for you only. You may have gone through pain. You may have gone through challenges. You could even be going through a number of challenges even as we, continue, as we uh, hear this service, this sermon this morning. The Lord is using your experience for a reason. Hallelujah. All experiences are part of your ship. Painful, good or bad, are for the glory of God. Joseph of Egypt... He had to be sold by his brothers. He had to be rejected. He had to go into prison for a very painful experience which was meant to deliver his family from drought. So our painful experiences, our agony, our challenges are to be used to glorify the Lord. So do you now understand your shape this morning? And are you comfortable with your shape? Will you use your shape to serve the Lord? That is what the Lord wants us to do. So whether it is your spiritual gifts, whether it is your abilities, your personality, your experiences, all these are required to be used for the glory of God. Now, how can you identify your shape in case you're struggling? The key to knowing your shape for me is in the book of Mark 3.14. Mark 3.14 says something interesting that he appointed the 12, he started with appointing, that he, number two, might be with them. And that, number three, he might send them to preach. Please note those three things. That Jesus first appointed the 12, then he stayed with them and eventually sent them. The 12 disciples of Jesus Christ were first made disciples before he named them apostles. Apostles were people who had already qualified, gone through experience, had been shaped to serve. And eventually, he discovered that their shape was that of an apostle. Eyewitnesses of Jesus who laid the foundation of the church of Christ. You can never be an apostle before you become a disciple. You can never be a teacher before you become a disciple. You can never be an evangelist before you become a disciple. Knowing your shape demands that you first know Jesus. Hallelujah. And it has to start with Jesus. And he in turn, he makes you a disciple. Remember we were looking at the, 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 the previous purpose was discipleship. Being a disciple. 
being Christ-like. So it first begins with you knowing Jesus, and then he makes you Christ-like, and after this, he sends you out to serve. Do you know Jesus? Do you have a relationship with Jesus Christ? When you know Jesus, he will in turn gift you so that he can send you to serve. Beloved in the Lord, as I conclude this morning, we are all gifted differently for different functions. Don't look down on yourself. You have what it takes to serve. Joshua told the Israelites in Joshua 24 verse 15, choose today whom you will serve. Please note, he did not tell them, choose today if you will serve. It is whom you will serve. Because even when you do not choose to serve God, you are choosing someone else or you're serving someone else. The choice today is that we may choose to serve the God, our creator, our father. And this is not a choice. And it is not for the ministers, like we said. Because to whom much is given, much is expected. We are all shaped to serve the Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Our dear God, we thank you. Because long before you created us, you shaped us for a certain purpose. Some of us, Lord, are still struggling to identify that purpose which you created us for. But we thank you, Father, because you have encouraged us that the way we are, it was for a certain purpose in your ministry. Our spiritual gifts, our heart, our abilities, our personality, and even our experiences, all are meant to serve you. Some of our experiences, God, have been very painful. Some of us have gone through experiences that we feel like we can no longer stand before your people to encourage them or serve. But we are thanking you, Lord, today, because in your word you remind us that many are the afflictions of the righteous. But you are faithful, God, because you lift them from all. We may be afflicted. We glorify you, Lord, because it is for your service. We may have gone through good experiences. Help us, Lord, to use them for the glory of your name. We worship you, God, and we thank you. And we pray that you shall find us faithful in your service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you.